Hey IB environmental students, we're going to be heading back talking about biotic factors and how we measure them. We did this a while ago, but this is part two, referring back to our objectives topic 2.3. We talked about mark and recapture as a type of measurement for biotic factors, but now we're going to talk really briefly about three things that we'll do sometimes when we go outside and we'll mostly focus on these bottom two that are starred here. So here's some of the ones that we talk about kind of infrequently in class, but it's good to know them. When we measure the density, we're talking about the number of individuals in a given area. How many organisms are there in that area of that particular species? We can also refer to the coverage. In comparison, this is really looking at how much area does the individual cover. So different sized organisms are going to cover different area. And it also will depend on are they overlapping on top of each other or not. Um, Frequency is how many times an event occurs. Usually, we usually think about frequency more about like natural disasters like fires and that sort of thing. Um, we can think about it as um, interactions have a frequency, like how often do these creatures mate. Um, so we don't really talk about frequency that often. Sometimes we can just talk about how frequently they show up in an environment. Let's mostly focus on these two, biomass and diversity. And we've been um, talking about them briefly, but not really giving specific definitions. So what is biomass? Biomass is actually this stuff. Any sort of material an individual puts out as mass, and it's going to be highly related to productivity, especially gross productivity, which is amount of organic material. And this is just mass, organic material. And we're going to talk about mass in per unit area of time. And we can talk about two different main types of mass. We can talk about the fresh kind, which it would be wet, okay, meaning it has water. And it's when organisms are alive. And this is the most ethical way to do this. However, when we are comparing things like um, a pumpkin and a, um, and a watermelon, which are both kind of can be the same size, a pumpkin is really dense but has this hollow area other than the seeds, and a watermelon can be really heavy, but what is it mostly made out of? watermelon. So until we really take out the water, we might not know the difference between how much organic matter is in a watermelon or a, um, or a pumpkin of the same exact size. So in that kind of scenario, we would, we would really want to dry out the organism. And this is really tough because we would have to then kill the organism. So we don't like to do this really for animals. We usually would do dry weight for plants. Um, but we would remove the water content usually by putting the organism in a dry oven and incubating it at a pretty high temperature for the water to slowly evaporate. But we wouldn't want it to be too high because we don't want it to become crispy. So we actually have an incubator in our classroom that we can do this with if that's something you ever decide you want to measure in an IA. Let's talk about diversity now that we've talked about biomass. So diversity in general is going to be the variety in a ecosystem. Um, and we can think about it as these three different things in red. The first one is richness. And we're going to, when we talk about these, look at these two different tree farms, plot A and plot B. Um, richness is going to be the number of different species in a specific area. So I would count how many different types of organisms are there. And if I actually look closely enough, I'd see that there's this one, this one, this one, and this one. And that's four. And I can find the same different four species here. So because they are each four different types of species, these two plots, these two tree farms, have the same richness. So if that's how we're measuring diversity, they would have the same diversity. But if I were to measure the relative abundance as my diversity measure, um, that's the number of individuals within a specific species. So um, if I were to look closely at A, I'd actually find that they all, each type of different tree, there's the same almost amount of them, and there's about four or five trees within each kind of species. And so that would be the relative abundance for each of those species. But if I look at plot B, I look at this fluffy tree, and I would find that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of those trees. That's the relative abundance of that tree. Versus this tree, there's only one, and this tree, there's only one. And that's the relative abundance of those species. So looking at that, I can kind of see the diversity, but this is really a good measure to almost help me get the answer to this measure of diversity, evenness, which is, in my personal opinion, the best measurement. Why? Because it's going to see how, how common it is for a particular species to dominate the area. So if I can compare A and B tree farm plots, is one of them have a species that's dominating? 
Yeah! Oh my gosh, yes. Look at this one that had 16. That guy's totally dominating. And because it's dominating, if I compared the relative abundances, where there's just this one that's that species and then just this one that's that species, this is a very low evenness compared to this plot, which there's pretty much just four or five of each type of species. Um, so if I look at that measurement, that's going to really give me a good idea of the diversity of my area. And we can actually put numbers to that, and that's called Simpson's Diversity Index. So Simpson's Diversity Index, in general, is going to measure richness and evenness, okay? Um, and so this is going to be kind of a scary-looking equation, but we're going to practice it. So D refers to diversity, and the big N, because there's two different size Ns, just make sure you see that. Um, the big N is the number of all of the different organisms. So I would have to go back to my plot and say, hmm, how many total trees are there? This little N is going to be different depending on this particular species I'm looking at. Okay, and here's the bigger trend here in yellow. If my diversity is high, my D is high, that means I have a stable site, meaning it's mature, like a climax community in succession. If I have a low D, when I do this calculation, that's going to suggest that there's some sort of disturbance, whether it's pollution, human colonization, or agriculture that's occurred in the air. Maybe it's just a volcanic explosion. Who knows? But this is a really good measurement of diversity, and we're going to practice this a lot. But first, we're going to do a practice problem, because I know you were scared looking at that problem. So we're going to use the data set below, and we're going to compare the number of insect species and their diversity in the two ponds. So I have two ponds. I have pond one going across in this row, and I have pond two going across in this row, okay? And I have each of these different columns is a different species type. And then at the very end, I have the total number of organisms, okay? So remember, I'm calculating D, diversity. I can use the big N, which is going to be my total numbers. And I can use the different individual species to use as a little m. Now, this weirdo symbol is called a sigma, which means sum of all. Sum of all. And I'm going to actually have to do this calculation twice, one for each pond, and I would compare the D values. So let's do that. So here's my first calculation, pond 1. Okay, my big N. Double check, my big N right here, 103. Right, and then my next part, my big N minus 1, 103 minus 1. Now here's the scary part. It looks really scary. You can totally do this. Sum of all means I have to do this n times n minus 1 for every species. So if I were to look at this kind of pattern here, I would need to do this how many times? How many species do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now how many sets of this little calculation do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I looked carefully, this would go really along with each species. So this little area here is representing this species, the waterman boat, water boatman, whatever that is, right? So that's little n for 43, little n minus 1. Okay, but now I have to do it for the next species. 18, 18 minus 1. What comes next? 38, 38 minus 1. 3, 3 minus 1. 1, 1 times 1 minus 1. And then I would do the calculation, which is looking really scary, but it's okay, it's just Plug it in, just slow in your calculator and double check. And I end up with this value at the end. Let's do this for pond number two. You try it. So, once again, I can't use the same big N because I have a different number of species in my area. So I use 89 this time as my big N. And once again, for every single species, I do the equation again. 26 goes from here, the 18 was from here, the 29 was from here, the 11 from here, and the 5 from here. This part looks really scary at the bottom, but I promise you, if you just do this pattern of n times n minus 1 for each of the species and then add them up, that's all it's asking for you to do. So let's see. I have two different d values. And if I went back to my previous slide, I said that the larger the d value, the more diverse, right? The more diverse and even. And does this make sense? Let's look at my numbers. What would have I predicted? Well, here I have some species that are really low numbers compared to some species that are really high numbers. I have some low species over here, but overall they're a little bit more even, right? So let's see. Pond 2 has a D of 4.3, which is greater than Pond 1 with a D value of 2.98, meaning that Pond 2 has a higher diversity with a larger D value. And that's what we talked about last 
in the last slide. So we're going to practice this more in class. <clears throat> so you just made your way through one of the toughest types of math problems we're going to do this year. We're going to practice it as a warm up and I wouldn't fret. We're going to also talk about how we can apply this in when we do outdoor, outdoor stuff, especially when we go on our field trip. So I'll see you next class. Good job, guys.